my name is Aaron and I work as the clay services manager here at CASA as well as an art instructor. And thank you for welcoming us here at CASA into your home. As the Spanish say, mi casa es su casa. So let's get started. We're going to be doing some fun, uh, fun project today. Uh, today we're going to do what's called a pocket planter. Now this particular pocket planter was made by the late Leela Martins, a uh, local potter. And uh, I purchased this and have it in my home collection. So um, I did a version of that um, previously before this little video and got this. So this is my interpretation of this. We're gonna do something very similar to this. It's a little smaller than, than this one here. Um, and that's because of the size of clay that you have to work with. So as you have in your home kit, um, you've got a six pound, six pounds of clay. So that's two three pound blocks of clay. What um, we're gonna be using today is some clay. This is recycled clay. Uh, we recycle about 5,000 pounds of clay here at Casa every year. And this is just a sampling of it. So, so that is in the bag. So you don't have to open that yet. We are also going to be using something equivalent to a pin tool. And what we'll use in place of it, which you might have at home hopefully, is a knife. So we'll put the pin tool aside. And this is what we'll be using today as well. We also use in clay, um, a, these are called scoring or feather brush tools, this metal tool with these eight little prongs on it. And that's meant for scratching the surface of clay. In place of that, we're just gonna be using a regular fork using a plastic fork and then as well uh, for smoothing out areas of clay and, and blending you call it um, you can use a rubber rib tool um, that's what we use at CASA here in our classes but for our purposes at home we're going to be using a little spoon we've got a spoon a fork a knife and we're also going to if you can find around your house a pencil or pen uh, bamboo skewer works as well if you have one of those kicking around the house, but just for simple measures, we'll just use a pencil. And also, you should be able to find some water at your home. Hopefully you're not out of water. I know you might be out of toilet paper, but we definitely, hopefully have water still in our taps. So you'll need a little container of water and, and uh, we also use a sponge. So if you can find a sponge around your house, if not, you can just use your fingers to dip in the water. You don't need a sponge, it's an option. So container water with the optional sponge. Now this one's kind of a uh, hope you have it around your house, which is a rolling pin. Um, we actually use a big machine here at CASA called a slab roller. We won't be using that today though, we'll just be using a rolling pin. And if you happen to have a couple wooden slats you probably won't in your house, you may or you may not, or something that would substitute for this. Maybe about a half inch thick or a quarter inch thick would be fine. And we're using that to roll with the uh, rolling pin. You'll see that in a bit. So the slots we will be using today and we will be using the rolling pin. And that's pretty much it for, um, for tools. The last thing we get the luxury of using, which you probably, if you're a fisherman, you'll have some fishing line around your house and you can make a, a wire cutting tool which substitutes for wire fishing line, I, I actually prefer. And then you just have a couple of nuts or washers to string it to. And we use this to cut through the clay. So I will be using the, the, the um, fishing line to cut through the clay. You can also just use a knife to cut through clay or you can just tear it off. But this does a nice cut through the clay. So like I said, we're gonna be making, if you remember, that's right, a pocket planter. And this is, like I said, the one I made today. So I'll, I'll try and recreate this. Uh, I'll maybe just put it in the foreground here off one camera on another. And that will keep me in line, all right. 
So, for starters, let's get out um, one of the pieces of clay, one of the blocks of clay, one of the three pound blocks. And remember to put the unused portions back in the plastic bag, because what dries out clay is air. So as long as the clay is covered in plastic and there's no air in the plastic bag, it will stay moist for a good amount of time. Um, so we're going to use a wire cutter. For those of you at, here at, at home who have a wire cutter, we're going to cut off the top third of it and we're going to put that back in the bag. We're going to try not to use that. We're going to save it for another project because we have other projects in mind for you guys to try at home in the future. But today we're going to do the pocket planter. And it's kind of a good optimal time to do this pocket planter because spring is going to be here before you know it. And at that time, you know, you might be able to plant a, plant a plant in the pocket planter. Or you could just use it as a container, you could hold your keys, you could hang it in your wall, at, in your house. It's got a nice little hole on it where you can hang it from a, a nail. I actually had this hanging in my garage and obviously wasn't using it for a plant, but um, just had some things stored in it. So it's a pocket planter or just a pocket holder. You can do it whatever you want. It's kind of like a wall sconce too, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. So we've got approximately two pounds of clay here. Each project that we're doing um, in this series is uh, two pounds of clay. And what I want to do for this project is we're going to use, we're going to make the whole thing out of a slab of clay. So let's set our pencil, our spoon, our knife, and our fork off to the side for now. And we're going to set out our two sticks and place them a distance apart. And you want to place them a distance apart so that the rolling pin is still staying on top of the sticks. Okay. So you don't want the rolling pin to fall off the sticks and that way they're gonna, because we want to make the clay a uniform thickness. That's the whole purpose of the sticks is to make it a uniform, the same thickness, okay? So you can actually just take your hand and pound the clay a little bit to get it started. Don't flatten it all together. Just make it about an inch thick maybe. You can flip it over and make it about an inch thick. So that's a good place to start. I'm gonna set the water off to the side. We won't actually, in clay hand building, you use very little water. Now, a lot of you guys, when you think of pottery, you think of the pottery wheel, but um, that's not what we're doing today. The pottery wheel involves a lot of water. You're constantly wetting your hands when you work on the, on the wheel, and there's a reason for that. But with clay hand building, very little water. Just a drop will do you. Okay, so you don't need a big container of water, just a little bit in the bottom of the container. All right, so are you guys ready? That's a yes, that's an affirmative, okay. All right, so we're going to roll out. So you're gonna roll back and forth with your rolling pin. And there was one other thing I forgot to mention. We're also gonna be using newspaper. The newspaper will come in handy. Um, it's going to be there to hold the shape of the pocket. And that's where the newspaper comes in. So if you have a little bit of newspaper around the house or even newsprint, even toilet paper would actually work or paper towel, um, anything kind of works, that, anything that has give to it, like a, a squishy kind of material. So you don't want to yeah, have it too hard. Okay, so we're gonna roll back and forth. Like I said, you can flip the clay around. We're trying to create a long oval or a long rectangle. Basically, the longer the better. And you want it to be about as wide as the sticks are from each other. So, how is everyone doing? Good. How are you at home doing? Two thumbs up? I hope so. All right. Um, all right. So, then what I also do, just to make it a little bit thinner and to stretch our material, is we're literally going to stretch it. 
This, I believe, is called a lady named Elaine, Elaine who taught me a lot of the clay. I think she calls it pizzaing the clay. So we actually just stretch it, lift it up, stretch it, lift it up. And you want to make it about a quarter inch thick. A quarter inch is about as thin as you want to go with hand building. You can go thinner, but it's getting really delicate if you do. And we don't want our pocket planter to be too, too delicate. We want it to be durable, roughly. All right, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go about two thirds of the way down the clay. Um, and I'm gonna draw a line across with my pencil, okay? So go ahead and do that. Then with this handy straight edge, so you can use a ruler from around the house, that might be your substitute for the stick, I'm not sure. But, um, and then you're gonna take this knife, the knife you have, and you're gonna cut along that line you drew with your pencil at the two thirds mark. And then you're gonna cut right through that clay. <coughs> All right, so we have a two thirds of it off to one side, which you can see it's kind of a long ovaly sort of shape. And then the other third is going to represent the pocket. This is going to be used to make the pocket. And this is going to be used to make the backing. Okay? I guess if you had an example just like mine, you could cheat and you could trace it. Um, I'm going to freehand it because you guys are freehanding at home. That's only fair. All right. That's how, I, that's how I did this one. I just kind of free, looked at that one and freehanded it. It doesn't have to look exactly the same as this. Do your own artistic, creative expression. This guy actually kind of looks like a little person with his arms out, his little head or her head. And uh, so anyways, it's, it's kind of fun. You can play around with it. You can have the arms posed in different ways. It's up to you. Maybe you have the arms hanging on their hips, whatever you come up with is just fine. So um, what I'm gonna do is I wanna use my pencil now and I wanna draw something of the like of the backing. So you're looking at that backing, you can see it's quite a long ovaly sort of shape and then you can do the top however you want. So I'll just draw that and the camera will hopefully pick up on this. So maybe I'll, I'll do a copy of a copy. So go ahead and draw yours. Use the full amount of clay. And just take your time. If you have to stop the video to take your time with this, go, go for it. How's everyone doing? Good? All right. So now it's a little trickier with, with um, a knife to follow along. It's easier with like a bamboo skewer if you have one of those around the house to cut through the clay. A knife will work to a certain degree. Um, we're also working on a canvas table. Uh, a cloth surface is really ideal to work on because clay doesn't stick to it. Clay sticks to wood, metal, glass, and plastic, but it doesn't stick to canvas especially. So I'm going to cut through here with this plastic knife. I'm sure everyone has a little picnic plastic knife kicking around. If you don't, find something that will cut through it. Okay, and we're going to be smoothing out all these rough edges because you can probably see it's gumming up and it's a little bit um, rough on the edges and we'll be fixing that. And what do you think we'll use to fix it, you guys? A sp SpongeBob SquarePants, that's right. Okay, all right. So we're gonna be using a sponge. Maybe you guessed that at home. I think you may have, some of you may have. Okay, so this is when you, you talk, to the, uh, talk to the world and hope they're listening. It's one of those occasions, I guess. All right, so I've got my, my, my backing for my pocket planner. Now to do the, the um, so that's kind of what that looks like. Does everyone have something sort of like this? They've got their own drawn out figurine kind of character. Um, all right, so now we're going to do the, um, the pocket. 
So how you're going to do that is you're going to trace a half circle. And the half circle has to be at least as long, if not a little bit longer than the, uh, the bottom half of your figure. So it will basically, well, it's going to be the bottom half of the pocket planner. So the bottom half area is where you're going to make a half circle. So it has to be at least that long. I'm going to make it a little bit longer because you can always trim it off if it's too big. But if you cut it too small at the start, you might not have a lot of success. Now keep in mind, if you mess up and it doesn't seem like it worked out, the great thing about clay is you can always re-wet it. You can wedge it by slamming the clay and getting rid of the air bubbles in the clay. Air bubbles are an enemy in clay. You don't want them because when air heats up in the kiln, when we fire these projects in the kiln, uh, if there's an air pocket, it, it will uh, expand when it heats up and it'll actually explode in the kiln. So you don't want that to happen. So we never have uh, air pockets in our, in our hand build wares as well as wheel wares. So you never have any air pockets. So let's try and avoid those. But anyway, I was trying to get to the point where if you, your project doesn't work out the first time, you can always add a bit of water, you can wedge the clay up again, and you can reuse it indefinitely until it's been fired. Once it's been fired, clay then becomes a different form. It becomes a ceramic piece, and then it's a different chemical well, form, and it can't be broken down except for a long time of eroding. All right, so now, we are going to connect this to that. So what I'm gonna do is roughly follow the path of the outside of the plant, of the, the backing, sorry. Now my backing's a little bit too wide, so I'm just gonna trim that. Like I said, it's just roughing it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we can improvise a bit. And that way I don't have to stretch this. You could also stretch this a little bit more and make it a little thinner. There's options, but anyways. So I'm going to, you want to basically have it so that it has a curved pocket. Now Leela Martins was an amazing potter. She did very good precision work. And take a look, I believe she probably just freehanded these, didn't have any kind of a mold. And look at how perfect they are. They line right up to each other. Well, she probably used one to make the other, but uh, very precision work by Leela. So she was a professional potter in town here. Um, anyways, so that's, I, you just want to rough it in so that it matches up. Now don't connect it together just yet. Now that you know that it's going to work and you've got a, 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 the edge lines up with the edge, now you're going to peel that off kind of hold it into its little rounded shape like that. And now comes the fork. Does anyone remember what the fork is for? Scoring. Scoring, that's right, Katie. So we're going to scratch the surface or score the surface of the, um, of the clay, uh, of the, the, the edge of the surface of the clay. Basically the part that touches the other part. Wherever clay bonds to clay, that's where you want to score. So the scoring, you're gonna also score the backing. And you don't have to score the whole thing, you just score the part where the, where the, where the pocket meets the backing. So that's gonna follow all the way around the perimeter, the edge, and the more roughness, the better. The more it's going to stick, kind of like Velcro, a rough surface to a rough surface. All right, so now is where the water comes in. We've got that done. Does everyone have their scoring roughly done? Yeah, okay. So you don't need to put water on both parts. You just need to put water on one part. So I'm, I'm gonna put it on the backing because it's easier. It's just sitting there, it's just not curvy or whatever. All right. And then, now we get to get out a little bit of our newspaper. So you're only gonna need about half of half of one half, like just like a quarter sheet of newspaper and a single sheet. Don't double it up or it's gonna be too uh, compact. It's gonna be too hard. You want it to have lots of give to it. 
So crumple it up into a loose little thing. And, and the reason for that, this is, I guess you would call it in sculpture terms, an armature or a support structure for the clay. So that's just gonna make it so that the, um, the pocket doesn't cave in while we're working on it. All right, so we've got our, our wetted area. You're gonna put the, the newspaper just inside this pocket and make sure it doesn't go, oh, it doesn't block the nice scored areas that you've just, just done. So make sure the scored areas are still free to touch the other scored areas. So you're gonna just line that up. And like I said, this is not the pre precision of perfection. We're just having fun here. Um, and do some personal expression. Think about um, kind of things you could add on to this as well. I did some simple things with this one. So I, um, I drew a leaf and then I also did a relief in relief. Ha! I just thought of that. Anyway, this one is, is carved in and this relief leaf is sticking off the surf. So basically uh, a relief is when something, uh, a sunken relief is when it's carved in and a low relief is when it sticks off the surface. So the leaf is in relief. Who wants to do a leaf on there? Oh boy. Uh, having too much fun. As my dad once said, don't get carried away or you will get carried away. Okay, all right. So now we're gonna go around and blend. Um, you can use your spoon if you like, and we're going to blend and make sure that where the clay meets the clay, that gets blended so we're hiding the seam. We're getting rid of the seam. And the reason we're doing that is so it stays connected as well it makes it look more like magic like how did you build this and you're the one with the secret you know how it was done because you did it all right so now now that we have this done um, i usually like to flip it over and just see how the and support it when you do that i always like to see how it's doing on the other side so now you can use your sponge and I would smooth around the outside edge. Often the edge when building with hand building is the part that gets the roughest and it gets the, the well, the most tr treatment. And so you need to fix those edges. Otherwise, once this is fired in the kiln and it becomes ceramic or rock, if you have a rough rock that you pick up at the beach, what would you do? You might cut your hand, right? So you want to um, make sure and smooth those edges so that we don't get cut. And more importantly than fired clay, but when clay is put in a kiln and, and then it's fired with glaze on it, um, the um, glaze is glass, right? So that's like any of the coating that you have on your pottery dishes at home, like cups or plates or whatever, that has a glass coating on it, which is the color which seals in the clay. And uh, if you get a glass cut or a glaze cut, that's the one you want to, that's a lot worse than, more severe than a clay cut, I think. Um, so yeah, we always smooth it around so that when the glaze goes on there in future, um, it's going to be nice and smooth as well. And then we don't have any worry about getting cut. Okay, so there's the, ver the first, version of my pocket planter. It's just getting, we're almost there. How are we doing for time there? We're doing, good. we're doing well, okay. All right, and everyone's kind of feeling like theirs is coming together pretty well or? Now, if you want to, um, if you want to um, add on to it, we didn't use all our clay. I think most of you probably have some scraps and with that clay, remember you can save that clay for any kind of little project. Maybe you want to make a snail, I don't know. But whatever you want to put on your pot, I'm going to do a relief in leaf again, just to show you that how that was done. But this time I'm going to do the relief in leaf and just because leaves are part of plants and it's a pocket planter, what the heck. Um, so there's my little leaf. Okay, 
So we're gonna, and you only need to score the shape of what you're scoring and where it's being attached. You don't have to score the whole area of, of the planter thing. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna put a little drop of water, use my sponge, a little drop of water goes on there. Thank you at home for making this worthwhile. Okay, so I've attached that. Now that pocket of uh, newspaper that's inside, the whole reason that it's there is to hold the, the shape of the, the pocket. Because if you press on it while I'm pushing this um, leaf to stay stuck on there, it, um, it would cave in otherwise, right? So that's what the purpose of the newspaper is for. So when people do hand building, they usually um, will, or sculpture or whatever, they usually um, will take that, that newspaper out once the clay is leather hard. And you can do that. You can wait for it to be halfway dry, which is what we're probably gonna do. Just wait to take out the newspaper. Because once it's leather hard, then it's, it holds its shape on its own. The clay is stiff enough to hold the shape on its own. And that's what that's, I think I mentioned at the halfway dry stage. It usually takes anywhere from a number of hours to a day or so, uncovered. If you cover things in plastic, it'll take even longer to dry out. Because there's less air getting at it. Okay, so now every good leaf has some veins. So I'm going to draw the veins of the leaf some simple ones. Um, if you have a bamboo skewer or something a little pointier, maybe even a knife might work well. Um, you could try the knife. You might draw a nicer line than the, than the pencil bud. So whatever works for you. Another awesome film, whatever works. I like that one. Woody Allen movie. Um, all right. So that is that. The, um, all right. So the last thing I'll do with mine is I'm going to poke a hole in it with the pencil and that's so that it can hang on your fence or wherever you want to put this in your house. Um, some people have apartments and they don't have fences. Well, you can put it wherever you like lean it on your dresser. I'm not going to dictate. You can do what you want. It's your free life. Okay. So I think my, I would have to say mine is pretty much done. Um, of course, uh, it's always good to, um, I've got a little symbol that I do on my art. So I'm going to do that. I don't know if the camera will pick up on this. It doesn't really matter. Mine's a little smiley face, which is always positive to look at. Got these little ears. And I always like to date my things, and that way I don't feel lonely because I have a date. Ah! Yeah. No. Um, I always put the date, so the year is 2020, the year of self isolation and friendship. Okay, so that's the backing with the little symbol on there. And then that's of course the front of the pinch of the pocket planter. And uh, yeah, you shouldn't handle it too much and lift it up in the air. Now clay is, is very heavy material. So not as heavy as bronze of course, but it is quite heavy. So you have to think the weight of the, of the planter has to be held up by this little bit here. So make sure when you do your hole for hanging, that the hole isn't right at the edge. If it's too close to the edge, it might break, trying to hold the weight. But you'd be surprised, clay can hold quite a bit of weight by a hole. It's not bad um, once it's fired, of course. Um, before it's fired, it's quite, I don't know if I'd say delicate, but uh, right before it's fired, like when it's loaded into a kiln, it's basically like dirt, like it's bonded dirt and, and it's, it can, it's quite brittle actually. So 
Right now I can hold this and manipulate it and stuff because it's malleable. When it's leather hard, that's the strongest stage for clay when it holds its own shape. This is actually almost leather hard now and I just made this about an hour and a half ago. So it's already dry to the air and it's holding its shape and it's kind of, I could, if I put too much pressure on here, I would break it. Um, and this is the brand new one made. So we've got the one made this morning, the one made just now, and then I think, Brad, is it time for us to show everyone else's and what they've done today? Okay, all right. So I think that pretty much wraps up my demonstration. I hope you guys at home had a lot of fun doing this, and we hope to, um, be able to fire these in our kiln for you in the in the not so distant future. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, that that's it. That is a pocket plancher in a nutshell.